when he's just about to kill himself and he counts to three. <laughs> I love all that. And, and they're wonderful people in the cowardly lie, and I feel it's a humanist about them. They're, they're not slick. They lead with their heart and their feelings, you know? And uh, I think I'm like that myself, and I think Captain Dan is like that. And all my people are kind of like that in a way, except a few meanies um, and, and greedies. Mm -hmm. And I do have the go-getters, and the go-getters are sort of like the fancy people who, when you, when you, when you look at the New York Times and the Sunday style section, and, 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 uh, on, and the, they have pictures of people at these parties. I don't know if you've ever seen that. You know? yeah. There are, for, a, for charity, there are parties, but they're all the go-getters and all the important people. And um, I, I, don't, I don't think I'd be comfortable with that, being one of the important people. Yeah. Um, is Betty heartless or clueless? No, she, she's, she's, uh, she's determined to be a good journalist. And, and that's a, that sort of precludes other things. But I think deep down inside, yes, she has, she probably would like to be, she, I don't think she would want to get married necessarily, have children, have a family. She wants to keep her career going. But I think she has feelings. So, But she doesn't sh uh, let them be seen because she's the journalist. She's a sharp girl around town. Did you see um, the movie uh, His Girl Friday with Rosalind Russell and Cary Grant? Well, and the hat. The women in those movies all wore hats. And uh, I love Rosalind Russell in that movie. And but there's a vulnerability to her in, in, in the movie, you know? But she's a tough cookie. So will Dan get his girl in the end? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My penny back there has that question mark. I don't know what's going to happen in the end. Yeah, we were talking, you and I, earlier uh, about a story. I, I can't think of a story. I, I can think of events and things happen or don't happen, like the year that nothing happened 23 years ago. Um, but I don't know about a story. I don't, I don't really want a story. I don't know. So when you started out uh, with Mukva, uh, what was your what was your first piece? Do you remember? Yeah, I um, I told you I went on wood. I was looking for wood, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I was really fed up. It's wonderful to get fed up. You know, you just said I don't want to do it the way I did it anymore. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to change my skin somehow. You know, and so I cut these blocks of wood. They were pro oh, they were probably about three inches square. I made a lot of them out of mason. I just took a big sheet of mason. I just, they have machines that chop, chop, chop. And then I just painted them all different colors. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to get a stamp. I'm going to have a stamp made of Dan. And because again, I really was hoping to get back to the mug for things. And I made a stamp and then I started playing with it. And I started stamping on these little, little uh, squares. And then I put them together. And I like that. That was really, and then it made me realize that's back to the way I was doing the etchings in, in its own way. And then I glue them, and then I said, it needs a little trim. And I made a little trim, a silly little decoration. And that was the beginning of, of, of the dance. And I did about, I don't know, about 10 of them. And then I did Miriam, Miriam slipping, Miriam getting it together, and things like that. And they were all based on little sayings, you know, like Dan gets it together, Dan in perspective, uh, uh, Dan having a heart of gold. And, and that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And then that just led to something else. Once you get a footing in, and you, you feel good about yourself and what you're getting, then all of a sudden things open up, and you start to. Then I did Dan on the Run, and that's more three-dimensional, you know. And I'm not saying this is the, is the exact chronology because I can't remember that, but and that started me going. And after that, I, there was no stopping. It was it was fun. It, it I would say fun because I think. Like they say, athletes should be having a good time when they're playing. And for me, it, it, it's work, but I, I just have to love doing it. Do, do you chuckle to yourself? I mean, do you ever have moments you think, Yeah, sometimes yeah. I do. Yeah, but that's so scary to do that. That makes me feel I'm going to be arrogant and presumptuous that, uh, hey, I'm no, a smart ass guy. No, no, not in that way, but um, I chuckle with the, the character that you've created that really. Like Dan has his heart in the right place, and, mm -hmm. and sort of laughing and his fumbling in a way, yeah. not in a, not in a not in a dark way, but right. um, but in a, a light spirit, and the, yeah. your own pleasure in seeing where it's going. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. When I do, when I I can think of the putting Dan in perspective, which is back over there, and and, and making the tile smaller and smaller. I just was amused by the way that I said. Uh, that's funny. Dan <laughs> reflecting. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, and then when Dan, and then with the Miriam splitting, like taking the, taking the uh, stamp and making it 
go like that. That led to other things. That led to other. That's what started maybe some of the literature of it. Miriam splits, and then Miriam is going to be. She's a real go-getter. She becomes the queen and through all kinds of um, things. Yeah. And and but then she's going to dis she's going to lose. She's going to go too far, and, and people are going to get rid of her. You know, off of her head kind of thing. And uh, and the splitting helped do that. It got me. It gave me the idea to do it. Uh -huh. So your most recent work, The Gate, is what are the dimensions? Yeah. Oh, it's eleven. It's about eleven feet high. And it's about 10 feet wide, with the center being about five feet in the center. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's this is big. your largest piece that you've ever created. Pretty much, I did some. Um, I did some murals for a children's hospital in Indianapolis, the Riley uh, Children's Hospital, and the, the spaces were 16 feet by eight feet, and then a little four feet coming out, a little alcove, and they were right across two banks of ele two out two elevators. And when you come out, you'd see it. So that was a large piece, but uh, I did five floors. So I did five of them. And, and that was a big piece. But this is sort of different. I think this is bigger because it has, it's much more complicated. I mean, I go, to, I, I go to Michael's and I buy all the little, I wait for Christmas and then I buy all the, the rejected or the on sale Christmas balls and all kinds of other things I can find. So it's a different kind of thing. It's a fun thing to do too. I keep saying that word, but it really is. Well, so do you envision? I mean, are your all your works continuing to be big, or are you working in a variety of sizes? Or well, okay, the the, the tabloid is probably is is probably oh about ninety inches deep. It's a T. It's a big T. So the T and goes about from top to bottom about ninety inches, and that's probably about forty. And then the next painting is going to be smaller. The rug, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm doing a quilt, and it's, it's the size of a bed, a double bed, which, which I think is about 60 by 80. And then I'm going to do a very, very large piece, but I, I don't know what it is yet. Do you think your style has changed, I mean, from when you started these Mokva pieces to where you've ended up in the gate? I mean, you've added more things. Um, it, it obviously, it's much more three-dimensional than the early pieces were sure. Still, pretty much two-dimensional mm -hmm. in the sense that they're flat, although they have ornate frames and whatnot. But mm -hmm. so you see your work continuing to be more, more and more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, more and more. Um, well, what happened when I started working on the floor because I, I didn't have any more wall space, it made it three-dimensional. Um, do I think my work? I think it's gotten richer. I think there's more investment in it. And I think I've I've, done, I've taken more outside objects like the plastic discs and things like that, and the glitter. And so I think it's richer in that sense. I think they, they belong to each other very, very much, but I feel more confident in myself now. I feel a lot more confident in what I do. In fact, I feel so good that, I mean, I, I just don't feel, oh, it's, a, it's an arrogant thing to say. I make mistakes, but the mistakes are so easy to, be, to correct. I, ha I feel I have a lot of margin of error which means a lot, you know, in other words, when you work on a simple, a piece of wood, and if it, I said this earlier, but if you don't like it, if it doesn't work, you can just trash it. And then I have a box of things that I don't use, and then I just go to them every once in a while and I, I recycle them. Yeah. So I think the work has gotten better, but I think I've gotten better, and I think that's the reason I've gotten better. Well, looking over, you know, your, your life's work, you know, starting from, you know, a child up to, you know, the mature works now, if, and I'm sort of putting you on the spot here, but okay. if down the line... Do I have to answer this one? Yes, you have to answer this one. You know, down the line... Otherwise the I don't get my check. Right, exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. We won't put those socks on the market, but the, <laughs> the Mukva socks. Right? Uh, yeah. What would you like for historians to say about your work? Well, Isn't that an a, awful question? That's a terrible question. I'm not going to answer it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't care, really. I mean, always, everybody always likes to be told to be written about in, in very favorable ways, obviously that was, why not? I mean, you'd be sort of nuts not to. Well, I suppose in the descriptive, in a descriptive manner, I mean, you know, Warhol's considered, you know, pop artist. Oh. Mother, Motherwell, you know, being, you know. Oh, I see. I mean, so if you were to just. I consider myself a popular artist. Mm -hmm. you, you know, like what Jack Benny was. It, they, I think Warhol and Lichtenstein, they are pop artists, but that's because I think they take the things that were in the commercial magazines and they used their, like the Ben Day things or the, 
and the photographs that they both used. And they exploited them for their visual purposes. And they're pop artists. And, and that, but I, I don't do that so much, even though my work is cartoon looking. Um, I think I'm a popularist. I, I would love to, if, if I had my druthers, I'd love to have Alan's Alley. I'd love to do Alan's Alley every week. Well, I, I don't know how to do it. I can't do it. I'm not going, it's not in my system, you know, but, or, or the Easy Aces or, or Bob and Ray or any of those things. So that's popular art. And that's what I gravitate to. I like Warhol. I like Lichtenstein better. He's cold, but I like his work. seems very cold to me. But I don't want to do that. I, I want to do something warmer and, and, and more affectionate. And that's what I always thought the radio programs were. I think Jack Benny is very affectionate. I don't know what he was like as a person, but I think the, the, the feeling you get out of the program is that Charlie McCarthy and, and Edgar Berg and all that stuff. So in Grove's Dictionary of Art, or one of those, you would say, Ronald Markman dates, you know, and popular artist. Mm -hmm. What would come after that? Oh, uh, good sport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Colorist? Uh, oh, well, I, I enjoy using color. It's, it's, it's part of my tool. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, it's nice to express myself through color. Um, would you say you're a painter and sculptor? I would always say I'm a painter because I just think I still make paintings, even though people say they're not. I, I, um, I guess I make constructions, but I don't think I don't think that way. I don't think, oh, today I'm going to make a construction, or today I'm a, 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 a co collagist or a constructionist. I don't think that way. I just think I just want to make the best thing I can make. I don't care about labels in that sense. I hope people respond favorably to my work. I hope they see things in it that make sense to them and they enjoy and maybe even make them think about things a little bit. Um, so I don't really pay attention to the format. All I know is that they're really difficult to create, they're difficult to be, you have to be careful so much. I'm, I break a lot of things myself. Um, they're, they're dangerous in that sense. I make dangerous work. Uh, so, where do you see yourself going now? Oh, I'm doing more of the same. Yeah. I mean, I, I have three, as I said, three paintings I'm, I'm working on. And, uh, and I'm also, I may, uh, people talk about a book, but I may also be doing the book. But that's quite a, a while from now. I want to do the paintings first. Of, a, 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 like an exhibition catalog of Makla or of its own storyline, or what, what, what direction? I th I'd, like the, I'd like the announcement that I did for this show. And I thought it would be visually like that somehow, and it would it would sort of be a, a an encyclopedia of everything that that's happened, might happen. Uh, no storyline. <laughs> you're not going to get rid of a storyline. <laughs> well, I only suggest that, and that yeah. do any of us have stories? I mean, aren't a sequence of events a story? I guess so, but they they seem to wrap up. You know, you you see a movie, and it starts with. These two people don't like each other. They fall in love, then they hate each other again, and then they fall in love, and that's the end. Well, that's because that's only one focused part of their lives. You know, they don't, you know, they don't include all the other stuff on the side. I so, guess so. You know, so you've got an endless. You know, I like I like endless stuff. I, I I think that's kind of great because I, I, I don't uh, I don't. Like in that painting over there, I had that big question mark, like, what's going to happen next? I like that, and I don't want to even begin to speculate. Uh, it's not important to me. I hear the school bells chiming, so maybe that's our, uh, for whom we have to go to told. class. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. Well, thank you so much. You asked me all those great questions.